So we've gone through the first half of the first season, so episode 5 feels like the last episode of the season, when the story of Ray, Nira, and Allison is officially over. And from the next episode, they will be played by two new actors, and the main characters in the Fire and Blood novel have just begun. Overcoming all expectations, the filmmakers have built a convincing background of the characters from big to small, which makes us not only understand, but also care about most of the players in the upcoming Kingdom games. It makes the audience don't know which side to support, so it's no longer an easy choice between Stark and Lannister. Will this extremely exciting episode make you switch sides? Before you decide, let's take a deeper look at what happened in episode 5. The film opens in front of the Runestone stage. This is where the Royce family lives with Lady Rhea, the wife we have heard about more than once, of Daemon Sargerian. Contrary to Daemon's harsh comments, the bronze bitch is a beautiful, strong, and independent woman. In her interaction with her brother, we can see a little bit of awkwardness, so it's not difficult to understand when a person who likes to harass others like Daemon can't stand her. Daemon is even more resentful of Rhea after the events in the previous episode, when their marriage directly prevented him from marrying Princess Rhaenyra to take a step closer to the book. Clearly, Rhea is the biggest obstacle in Daemon's path of ambition. However, this scene does not show that Daemon intended to kill Rhea in the past, but is just a perfect timing. But Daemon will have to be faster, because in the south, the royal ship is moving to the drift mark of the Valyrian house. King Viserys wants to quickly deal with the issue of the princess's marriage, and Laenor Valyrian is the most perfect choice. After defeating Otto Hightower, Viserys has chosen to use the Lionel Strong method as a new weapon. If you have watched the previous episodes, you will not be surprised when Lionel has repeatedly proved that he is an honest, stubborn, and un unprofitable advisor, at least compared to his predecessor. In the story, Harrenhal's commander is also described as an outstanding individual, when he achieved high achievements during his time as a mercenary in Citadel, and has a deep understanding of the law. It cannot be denied that in front of him is a difficult challenge, when he has to replace a talented military man, and is on duty at the right time when the king is preparing to welcome a big storm. And the one who created that storm was no one else but Otto Hightower. Before leaving the capital and returning to Old Town, Otto gave Allison heavy words of encouragement, capable of changing the fate of the whole land. Allison was amazed by the news and the concern for her daughter, making Otto advise Allison to immediately prepare Aegon for the execution. Not only for the sake of the country, but also for the sake of the family's life. Allison was now completely alone and couldn't trust anyone. But at the same time, a potential ally appeared. Laris, Lionel Strong's mischievous son, told Allison that Rhaenyra had been drinking moon tea, stirring up her suspicions about her friend. Laris immediately reminded her of the other two characters in Game of Thrones, and it seems that he was just following Littlefinger's path of chaos and chaos, that is, creating chaos to gain power for himself. We come to Lodar Driftmark, the seat of the Valyrian family. The coldness of the Viserys royal family is welcomed. The angle of the camera, placing Corlys higher than the king, shows that Corlys is holding a lot of power in his hands, and he will make the most of it to win the most profitable deal for his family. It's easy to understand, Viserys is very close to Corlys, and Corlys's wife has also been cut off many times. Corlys strongly suggested that his grandchildren be brought to the manor, hoping that a person who brought them to Larian would come to the throne. We already know about Viserys, how can we let Targaryen reign end? Finally, the two sides reached an agreement that the children of Rhaenyra and Laenor would bring them to Larian when they were born, but would return to Targaryen when they became noble. Not revealing their faces, but Corlys was very satisfied with this agreement. The next day, we were able to listen to their thoughts to understand more about their personality and motives. Through their words and actions, it can be seen that Corlys and Rhaenys love each other to the core. From Corlys's point of view, it is also the respect. It can be seen through the way he let his wife directly participate in the negotiation, and even let his selfless wife sit on his shoulder, because he sees Rhaenys not only as a wife, but also as the main queen of Westeros. That is also the reason why he has been trying non-stop for a long time to get closer to the journalist, in order to regain justice for her. Rhaenys can't hide his concern, when experience tells him that Rhaenyra's right will definitely be challenged by Prince Aegon, making Rhaenar fall into danger. Corlys and Rhaenys are still adult parents, when they know that Leonard is gay, but still loves him and doesn't forbid him to have children. Corlys is a little less when she thinks that Leonard will change, but it's still more than a parent today. Meanwhile, another negotiation is taking place off the coast. Growing up in abundance and freedom, it's easy to understand when Rhaenyra and Leonard have a very modern mind, and they have decided to hold a wedding to fulfill their duty to the country. In fact, there is an open relationship where they can go to bed with anyone they want. Both of them are happy with this arrangement. What Rhaenyra doesn't know is that she is the one who wants to make the last move, and has another plan. In a poetic way, Aladdin Cole lures his princess to run away to Essos, where they can get married and live a meaningful free life. For Kristen, this is the only way for him to restore the reputation that has been lost. Of course, he was expelled by Rhaenyra, and he left in anger. 
Back to King's Landing, he was summoned by the Queen to ask about that night. Allison still follows the usual casual style. Saying that the Three Kingdoms are not a problem makes Kristen believe that she is the right one. And in a moment of confusion, he revealed the whole truth. Allison panicked when she found out that she had been betrayed. She even had to think that Rhaenyra had teamed up with Daemon Bermudez to harm her father. Viserys's illness is a serious one. In the medical team, there is also Orwell, who will also play a very important role in the series later. When there is only Lionel in the room, Viserys begins to unravel his thoughts, arguing that he will not be remembered as a good king in the afterlife. It's easy to understand. Viserys's rule time is too peaceful. Without war, how can there be glory? A book about history like Viserys clearly understands that. Lionel tries to calm Viserys down, but it's really hard for Lionel because he understands the king by heart, who used to serve under Jay Harris's command, and has played a role close to Viserys for nearly 20 years. And the big day has come. The ship of Valerion has arrived at King's Landing. On the sky is Rhaenys on the dragon Malus, and Laenar on the sea smoke. It's a happy day, but the royal wedding makes the fans of Game of Thrones not worry when we all know how weddings in Westeros usually end and this time it won't let us down. The bloodiest characters step into the room to see who has the greatest appearance. Jason Lannister continues to talk nonsense as usual. The Hightower is also present, but it's clear that their status has decreased significantly after Ordo's fall. And the second place is out of the question. Now it belongs to Valerion. Demon has also returned. It's a pity that he took a step back. But who has the greatest appearance? There's no need to argue. Entering the middle of the King's speech, Alison Hightower finally speaks and brings the moment we've been waiting for since the beginning of the series. As Laris Strong said, green is the color of the light on the Hightower Tower to cheer the soldiers into battle. Green is the color of the light on the Hightower Tower to cheer the soldiers into battle. To find out which side he's on, all that's left to do is to stand up, the eyes and the cold congratulations that Ellison gave to Rhaenyra as if to say that she knew everything. This is also a chance to talk about the Hightower. Although the film may give many people the impression that the Hightower is a new elite in the reign of King J. Harris and Viserys, but in fact, they are one of the most noble and long-lived families. From the top of the Hightower Tower, they rule the city of Old Town, the longest and richest in Westeros, which is also the site of two powerful organizations. The first is the Citadel of the Martyrs, and the second is the Faith, the most pious religion in the Seven Kingdoms. The Hightower is famous for being good at cooking and often avoiding fighting, helping them become one of the wealthiest families in Westeros, on the outskirts of Lannister. And judging by the developments of this episode, it is possible that we are about to witness their full power. The party turned into a dance party. A lot of things happened at the same time. Geralt Royce accused Damon of killing Rhea, while Damon demanded the right to take the runestone of Royce's house, according to the rules. Damon threatened to take the runestone if he visited Geralt on his dragon, making him retreat. Cyrus was worried that Damon would ruin the wedding. Meanwhile, Lena Valerion noticed Damon. Damon approached and flirted with Lena, but then turned to his main target, Rhaenyra. At the same time, Lenore's lover, Joffrey Longmouth, found out a pretty clever way just by observing that Rhaenyra's secret man was Kristen Cole. Kristen was already upset because she was not happy with Rhaenyra, and because the queen knew his secret, it was getting worse. The conversation between Damon and Rhaenyra was always tense. Interestingly, even though he wanted to marry Rhaenyra, Damon still talked well about Leonar enough to see how much he appreciated his nephew with his reputation at Stepstones. He looked at Rhaenyra's face as if he was preparing to kiss her, and at that moment, the chaos had happened. Just as Viserys was worried, the party had an accident, but it was not caused by Daemon. Kristen Cole, for some reason, was close to Joffrey, and he hit the opponent's face until he died. Heronstrong heard his father's words and easily overcame the crowd to save Rhaenyra, while Daemon was heartbroken. A happy day at Westeros once again ended in disaster, and the victim was a man named Joffrey. Viserys couldn't wait any longer. He decided to cancel the ritual and the fight and perform the wedding ceremony while his blood was still flowing on the altar. The words were echoed in the tears of Lenore's eyes for the lover. King Viserys fell to the ground in the last scene. The rat appeared again, this time next to a puddle of blood, signaling that the worst is still ahead. Kristen Cole, who has no reputation left and is facing a criminal case for murder, has decided to take over her power. But Allison has foreseen this and has a very good first move. Convinced by Kristen Cole about her identity, Allison will have with her not only a third-generation knight, but also a very useful life certificate to fight Princess Rhaenyra. Will Rhaenyra and especially Lynor feel the same when they see Kristen standing in the Queen's chamber? Will that make Rhaenyra and Allison face off right in the next episode? And that's the first half of season one, where the characters and the world are introduced closely. The conflicts are established closely to prepare for the really explosive moments in the second half. Before we have a 10-year jump to the future in episode six, I need to ask you an important question. 
are you a fan of Fairy Mira or Allison? And what do you think about the performance of the two young actors who will temporarily leave us after this episode? Millie Alcock and Emily Carey? Which character do you like the most after the first five episodes? Comment below and I will see you again in the explanation video of episode six. Thank you for watching and see you again. May the force be with you. I'm gonna make him an offer again.